Our coverage begins with ABC correspondent Hayden Cooper in Tokyo. Hayden, what's the very latest on the nuclear situation? Look, perhaps the most uh, interesting development today, Lee, I think, is that the Japanese are finally uh, appear to be willing to call on American help to try and sort out this crisis. You've really got to say that today was another failure in the attempt to, to sort out the problems at this reactor, at this plant. There are six reactors there uh, and every single one of them is experiencing some problem of one form or another. Take the last 24 hours, for example. Uh, one reactor was on fire, another one was spewing out steam, another one was spewing out toxic gases, and two more were overheating. So, uh, and add to that uh, the, the fact that there's only 50 people there uh, trying to sort out the issues out of a workforce of something like 800. So in that sense, it's little surprise that uh, another day has gone by and the Japanese authorities have really been powerless to, uh, to uh, get on top of this situation. And Hayden, do Japanese citizens feel like they're getting sufficient information about what's going on? I think there's a very real sense of scepticism on a couple of counts. Firstly, in that zone 20 to 30 kilometres away from Fukushima, people are confused, uh, they are scared and they don't really know what to do. They've been told to stay inside their houses, but I think a lot of them would be very sceptical about whether or not that is enough. And secondly, down here in Tokyo, the people here are being told that the radiation levels are not a major concern. They're not a major health concern. People shouldn't worry. Yet still, quite a few people are actually leaving Tokyo. So I think it demonstrates a certain level of mistrust with the government and the bureaucracy and what they have been saying. When you say quite a few people are leaving Tokyo, are there obvious signs of nervousness or anxiety or panic? You can sort of tell that the place is a bit jittery. I wouldn't say it's a panic, but certainly there are people who have decided that it's just not worth the risk and they want to go. Uh, a lot of them are foreigners or tourists and they've brought their flights forward in order to get out just in case something goes terribly bad. Uh, but still, there are signs around the capital that perhaps things just aren't quite right. You know, supermarkets with shelves that aren't fully stacked. People are trying to stock up on food and other supplies. They're the sort of indicators that tell us that there's something not quite right in the capital. Also, uh, to, to some degree, the streets during the day are a lot quieter than you would usually expect in such a bu bustling metropolis like this. And that too is because uh, there's difficulty with transport and that sort of thing. People in some companies are being told to stay home. So Japan and Tokyo in particular uh, is a, a nervous city at the moment. What sort of aftershocks are you experiencing, Hayden? Well, that's the other thing that's uh, making people nervous because they are pretty frequent. In the past 24 hours, we've had a couple of aftershocks, which in any other scenario, you wouldn't really call them aftershocks. They've been magnitude six earthquakes. One was last night. Uh, and it went for about 20 or 30 seconds, building shook as they have been pretty frequently. Uh, and today, this afternoon, the same thing happened. And that quake was centred uh, out of Tokyo somewhere, but it was still strong enough uh, that it, uh, it was felt pretty clearly uh, here in the capital. OK, the vision we were just looking at then didn't match what you were saying, Hayden. We were seeing people lining up for, for petrol, but we can get a sense of uh, what's going on there. Thank you very much for speaking to us tonight. Thank you.